Welcome to Hope on Fire, relevant talk radio for young adults. Whether you're 25 or 45, there's bound to be a discussion that you care about. Our mission is to share practical ways to find God in your everyday life. And now today's host, Chris Lang. In a recent article from Space.com, I learned that overhyped, overstressed culture mess here has now found its way into our skies by way of orbiting space junk. That's right. In early 2010, a European spacecraft was averted from a spent Chinese rocket stage when it, it was found that they would have passed by each other at the little distance of 160 feet. According to the article, such a space collision would have caused mayhem in the heavens, adding clutter to an orbit altitude where there are big problems already. Now, it's one thing to lose your GPS or satellite TV to a collision like that, but what about the dangers of orbiting clutter in our spiritual lives? I mean, do we dare to keep playing dodgeball with, with this spiritual life, or do we want to declutter the mess? How do we find a life-changing, uncluttered, ongoing encounter with God? Hi, I'm Chris Lang, and today's topic is Clearing Spiritual Clutter. My guests today are Alan Martin, Shana Bailey, and Lionel LaMountain. These three talented God followers have teamed up to publish a new book that addresses the sacred discontent of many believers and how to more intentionally approach your spiritual life. Welcome, uh, Lionel and Alan, uh, to our hey. program today. Thank you, Chris. The book we're going to talk about as the basis for this program uh, just, uh, just came out off the press. It's called God Encounters, Pursuing a 24-7 Experience of Jesus. Uh, this is exciting, uh, guys. Alan, you, um, you, you, you've been close to this movement, God Encounters. Uh, give a background to our audience today. Yeah, well, in Florida, when I was church planting in Central Florida, we have a program where all of our church members from around the state get together. And for many years, the program that was geared towards young adults had dwindled to basically no young adults. A couple of older adults refusing to go to the adult meeting. And my colleague, uh, Jeff Gang, and I were commissioned to put together, quote unquote, a program. And we refused to do so because the program was not meeting the spiritual needs of the young adults. And from there is where God Encounters kind of blossomed and flourished. We got together with young professionals, college students and youth pastors there in the area and said, what would happen instead of doing a program, what would happen if we spent some time praying and pursuing a closer relationship with God? What would happen if our gathering was focused in on that? And that's kind of the birthplace of where God Encounters happened. A lot of people ask about the name God Encounters, if it's some type of brand name. But it's actually the reality of our pursuit and what we found has kind of generated this book and a movement that has kind of swept across our country and is going around the world. And we're really excited about what God's doing in our lives. So, Alan, God Encounters, um, it started as a sort of an event-based ministry. And, it, and, and, and now you have God Encounters programs going on around the world? Yeah. Well, the exciting thing about it is that even, even as we kind of thought we were doing something and pro providing an event, God was bringing up on His spiritual radar all around the world and literally all around us, other people that were passionate about pursuing Him and were discontent with just simply going through the religious motions. And so we, we'd like to take credit for God Encounters, but it's really our being a part of a larger thing that God was doing within a generation mm -hmm. to have us pursue Him, pursue His desires, as opposed to just functioning in another spiritual pep rally. Alan, talk a little bit about the, uh, the structure of the book, the theme in the book, you know, how it was put together, and, and then lastly, how you got connected with Lionel and Shana for this book. By the, yeah. Shana, by the way, will join us in the second half. Yeah. Go ahead, Alan. Uh, it's a fascinating thing. The scriptures continue to give us these faith practices that deepen our devotion to Jesus. And somewhere along the line, those lose meaning or we lose context. And what God Encounters is simply trying to do is to re renew these faith practices, these habits that you have, whether it's prayer or reading God's word, whether it's sharing compassion or simply knowing how to stop and rest. 
All these different faith practices for ages have brought us to a closer relationship with our Maker. And that's what we've tried to instill in God Encounters. Now, we've done a couple of things to it, is we're trying to use language that, first off, young adults understand, and second off, uh, in the Seventh-day Adventist denomination, we've seen many of our young adults fall away from our faith and not attend church at all. So we wanted to make sure the language of these faith practices fit with what young adults can perceive and actually put into practical practical uh, practice. So that's what we tried to do with it. So how did you get connected with, uh, with Lionel and Shana and some of the other authors for the book? Uh, you know, one of the things that we did as part of developing the gatherings was spend 40 days where we would pray together, but we'd also blog or we'd write devotions or focus in on particular passages. And so God Encounters in many ways is God kind of collecting all of these different authors, young adults. Some of them aren't even writers. Some of them are artists that have kind of put together their thoughts. Uh, I helped ed to edit it. But there was a couple of really strong individuals in regards to sharing and blogging uh, Lionel was a pastor in North Florida at that time, writing very contemplatively and seriously mm -hmm. in regards to his walk with God. And Shana was sharing the realities of being a young adult in the midst of all kinds of relational quagmires and conflicts <laughs> and searching oh, yeah. for God in the midst of it. And so as I kind of put all these things up on radar, we mixed it all together in this book. And I'm hoping that God's glorified and we're certainly doing it for his fame. Well, I'm telling you, Alan, I was impressed when I, I had just a, a brief amount of time to scan through this before the program, before the recording session today, and it truly is a human tapestry, is yeah. it not? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Even though we have these themes and we would have liked to take credit for kind of orchestrating how the themes happened by reading the experiences that people have had, and certainly as we focus in on, for one year, what we did with God Encounters the first time that we we deployed it was for one year we focused in on a particular theme and as God kind of shared that theme in the life of the young adults and we got these different entries you see this tapestry yeah. woven where we see God working in our lives and it wasn't a matter of us working on our own script or kind of organizing how the the traffic and the flow of, of the book would occur it was a result of God's tremendous and miraculous a weaving of our lives together that made it really powerful. Lionel, talk a little bit about uh, the journey you've been on over the last few years. You started a ministry, Life Ignited, mm -hmm. and uh, it, out of that, that the, talk about the flow of your spiritual journey and the way sort of that landed in this in the pages of the, this book and partnering with Alan. Well, I uh, first became introduced to God Encounters during, I think it was 2005, not sure, Alan, went over there for a seminar at Kalakwa, and I uh, transitioned out of full-time professional ministry in December of 2004 and went into writing in 2005 and it's something I've always loved doing is writing it's in my heart I just have a passion for it I love it and my favorite type of writing is devotional writing mm -hmm. I just love studying the Bible and having insights uh, being birthed into my mind and then writing about them and that's even how I process it personally and so my role in God Encounters came from a spiritual journey that began in January of 2005 because as I transitioned out of pastoring into writing and now being a just a regular person so to speak a civilian you know, yeah civilian <laughs> <laughs> a civilian <laughs> I did you have an honorable <laughs> discharge <laughs> I did have an honorable discharge that's, nice. very, that's very important it was a very honorable discharge all right brother. and uh, <laughs> I got, but I, but what I decided was I wanted to and I don't know if this will freak some people out who are listening but I wanted to discover God and experience him on his terms because all my life I've been through church school mostly or through academy or college you know our Christian college or seminary I've had teachers tell me what they what um, they didn't say it like this and they probably wouldn't s say that this is an accurate statement but I always felt like they were teaching me what I should believe about God not only what I should believe about him but what I should preach about him what I should teach about him and my relationships with people and people I'm trying to influence into a relationship with Christ through the mechanism of a church. And I decided that in 2005, I wanted to know him for myself on his terms. Amen. I wanted to come to that experience with a blank slate and told him, God, I want you to reveal yourself to me, uh, whatever you want to reveal, and as much as you think I'm able and ready to receive at this point in my life. And I have to tell you, between January 
and March of 2005, before things really kicked in, those were some of the lowest points of my life with personal um, issues we were going through, transitioning from a regular full-time job to freelancing to mm. being uh, a senior leader in a, a successful organization for a number of years, going to being your own guy. And um, it was, there were some other struggles we had. And in April of 2005, it's like I, I understood that God wanted to do something even deeper or more meaningful in my life. And uh, I just gave it all up to him and came across God Encounters just a few months later. But it was during that time that, uh, my goodness, it was, uh, I started studying every day from the Psalms, started writing about it and sharing m what I had learned with people who were interested. And they started passing these devotionals around and, and things just sort of grew. And um, I think Alan's, although Alan and I have known each other for over 20 years, he kind of heard about the Life Ignited stuff I was writing and, and our relationship as far as God Encounters took off after that. But what I'm writing in God Encounters is at the writings I have in this God Encounters book are from a time where God was really allowing me to be hammered and shaped and squeezed and dealing with some pretty yeah. deep issues that I was struggling with regards to some things that had happened in my life. Alan, I got to say... From the articles I've had a chance to read in this book, what yeah. Lionel just said, and reading, and we're going to hear from Shana after the break. We've got a couple minutes before the break. Uh, I can tell you, I was, I was impressed with the vulnerability and yeah. just sort of the human struggle and the human journey to understand what is this all about. Um, talk about... Talk about your journey, your spiritual, you know, you talk, you wrote a lot about the Sabbath and sacred space and uh, share a little bit before the break. We've got two minutes till we need to go out. Yeah. One of the things that's really a challenge for me, I'm still in full time ministry is, as you talked about the clutter, there is so much clutter, there is so much pressure, and I don't think it's just exclusive to ministry. I think all of our lives are filled with clutter and we get out, out of sync with even ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I focused in was the particular theme of Sabbath. Now, Sabbath for Seventh-day Adventists is a part of worshiping on a particular day, Friday sunset through Saturday sunset. But beyond that, the world operates on what the Creator has created as rhythms. Mm -hmm. We see the tides come in and out. We see the seasons come and go. And somehow we believe that if we take enough Vibrin and enough energy drinks, we can go 24-7. But God did not create us that way. And so part of my own struggle is saying, hey, I got so many things going on. I got so many things coming at me. How do I create sacred space in my life? And what God created and kind of renewed in me was an appreciation not only of the Sabbath as a what I call a week anniversary with God. We have our anniversary with a spouse. My, my wife and I celebrate our anniversary. But we have this week anniversary where we celebrate with God. We renew ourselves with God. And I needed that sacred space desperately. And mm. many of the young adults as part of that experience really saw sacred space missing in their lives. Mm. And as we do God encounters, that is a space where God just relishes being with his creation and renewing the original love that he created at the very start of the world with us. So it's been a great experience. And I've learned a lot from young adults. And I'm hoping that these, these um, stories are not just our stories, but stories that people can really resonate with. That's powerful, Alan. Um, how has it affected your family life, the God Encounters movement, and your own personal journey? You know, it, it's kind of funny because, you know, we talk about God Encounters, and sometimes my, my daughter gets a little peeved with me because I continue to read the entries over and over and over again. <laughs> uh, but, but it continues to be a part of the legacy that we have for ourselves and for the upcoming generations, and we're grateful for that. Thanks, Alan. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back. I'm Chris Lang, your host on Hope on Fire, relevant talk radio for young adults. I'm here in the studio with Lionel LaMountain. Welcome back, Lionel. Chris. And also joining us via webcam from the Washington, D.C. area, uh, someone that's no stranger to our uh, Hope on Fire audience, Shana Bailey. Welcome back, Shana. Hey, Chris. Thanks for having me. Now, this, uh, this topic is a different topic than the last one, of course. We're talking today about uh, the God Encounters book, the 24-7 Experience uh, with Jesus book. Right. Uh, talk to our audience about how you got involved with the uh, writing of this book. Sure. Well, when Alan Martin, who spearheaded the project, approached me, I was working as a writer for Insight Magazine as a relationship advice columnist, and I was also doing some freelance work and keeping my own personal blog on just a blog sharing site on the internet. 
and I got a message from this man that I didn't know saying that he had a book project and he liked the style of writing that I had and what I was talking about and I thought surely this was some stranger on the internet and it was just a scam and I had no idea who he was and so I asked around at Insight and found out that Alan has a ministry called God Encounters and he was doing some pretty powerful things for young adults in the North American division and so when he told me more about the project and what it was that he was trying to do then I decided that maybe it would be a really good opportunity. Well, Shana, how does it feel to be a, a published author now? I mean, not just on a blog, but in a real book. Um, and, and the yeah. fact that your articles, you know, they're, that you're, the investment you made in your spiritual journey and your blog are now in the pages of this book. How does, how does that feel? And you're, you're a young adult. I mean, you're in graduate school now, so you're pretty right. young. Right, I'm a medical student. So you're pretty young, but now you're in this book. And talk right. about that journey and how, that, how does that feel about your journey? right now at such a young age? Well, I think even more than having the glory of, of saying that, that I have a, a book that I, that's published that I contributed to, it means a lot more when I meet young adults at various Adventist conferences or on my own travels that tell me that they have read the book. And because I am a young person and I am experiencing a lot of the things that they are as well, that it's really helped them to kind of put things in their own life into perspective and I think that that means a lot more when you know that God can use you as a ministry to others than necessarily being able to put it on your resume afterwards. Lionel talked a lot about his spiritual journey and how his writing you know he, he talked about that spiritual cathartic the mm -hmm. cathartic process. Mm -hmm. Shana you shared a lot of vulnerable things in your blogs that are now part of this book. Um, right. It was a very heartfelt contribution. Um, talk about uh, one, give, give one of the experiences from the book um, that sort of gives a, a context. Right. Well, because it was a personal blog and I wasn't writing for any particular audience, I wrote a lot about the relationships that I was having at the time that I was blogging, which was when I was about 22 or 23. I was in my early 20s. And um, and also a lot of the medical issues that I was having. I had some pretty severe medical problems in college and right after I had graduated. And because I thought that I was just writing for myself and for the friends that I knew were reading this site, I was pretty vulnerable in what I chose to say and pretty open about it. And I think that probably helps people to be able to relate after the fact because there really were no walls and there weren't too many censors on what I was saying either. Lionel, tell one of the uh, articles from the book. You talked about overcoming some fears in one <laughs> of them that I found interesting. Well, I've always had a fear of water. Uh, I got pushed out of, although she won't admit it, when I was like five years old, my mean old cousin pushed me out of the boat. I was climbing up the ladder and, and we were in a lake and I was underneath for a while and that has made me scared of water my whole life. But I decided to go into diving. It just fascinated me. So I uh, learned how to dive around 1998, and it was just a fabulous experience. Although on my first official dive, my, me and my dive buddy got stranded from the boat, and they had to go on a search for us. So I mean, that's a different story altogether, but I didn't give up diving at that point. But one of the things that has struck me, even though I pushed through my fears when it comes to diving, is when you're under that water, you see all that color and how beautiful it is. It really struck me, and I write about it in one of the articles, on that when I was diving in Aruba, um, God didn't have to do that. You have yeah. these brilliantly colored fish, this coral, and he could have made it gray. Why didn't he make it gray or drab or brown or something like that? It, but it's colorful. And I got the idea of he did it because he enjoyed it. He enjoyed seeing that beauty. And oftentimes I have felt, and maybe wrongly so, that we say God is a God of beauty and he's put nature there for us to enjoy. But if it's okay for him to enjoy beauty and the nice things in life, uh, and nice things in life mean different things to different folks, I imagine. But it's okay for us. He wants us to, to have that beauty to grace our lives as well. And, and that was interesting to me to see that he would, uh, that th th it was interesting to me in the journey he's brought me on, not only to, to push me through my fears, but also to let me know that on this journey, it's okay to enjoy life and enjoy the beauties of life that I've often been felt and taught felt I've been taught to if you do that you do it with guilt guilty yeah. feelings you know but right. he's a god of love and joy and beauty and no fear and 
Man, diving is, uh, yeah, I'm still afraid to jump in the water. You know, I've not, you know, maybe 30, 40 times I've been diving to the Great Barrier, but I still do it because I love seeing what he did in Creation Week. Um, although, well, and it makes it all the more fun when you're doing it with your favorite dive buddy, right? Oh, yeah. Yes, my wife. It's uh, one of the most romantic times is Challenger Bay on the Great Barrier Reef. We're just diving alone, away from the boat, holding hands, looking at the fish, looking at the coral, and just feeling so one with each other and, and uh, seeing that God created this apparently just for us since we had the tanks and goggles on we're underneath and just enjoying it just love it you know so. that's awesome i know shana uh you wrote an article called the best is yet to come uh someone as young as you are of course this program is for young adults and uh, of course 60 is the new 40 so anybody who's watching could be a young adult probably in their minds and it's all a, really age is really just a number anyway that's right all it is doesn't matter. And uh, hopefully everyone who's watching today is growing up in their minds until they die. Mm -hmm. And uh, so at least I'm still trying to figure out what I'm going to do when I grow up. So <laughs> Shana, talk about The Best is Yet to Come. That article was powerful. Okay. Well, I believe that that one, I was talking somewhat about the experience that I had in college, which um, looking back after I had graduated was not the typical um great memories, everything was fabulous, I had such a great time. I had a series of really traumatic personal events that happened and at one point during my college career I was really, really sick and I had to be hospitalized and the, I think the day that I got out of the hospital or, or sometime close to it, within a week my car was totaled and mm. I broke up with my boyfriend and then I got hired to start a new job and I had to move and I couldn't be released from the lease that I had on another apartment and so in a matter of three months I went from having good health and good grades and a boyfriend and um, good finances to having really terrible health and my grades started slipping because of all the personal drama I was having and I had no boyfriend and no car and an apartment I was paying for that I wasn't living in and it was just amazing how quick in one snap um, everything changed and it just brought me to a very low point and I think that all of us in life go through situations like that where nothing is going right and nothing in our spiritual relationship has changed i hadn't stopped going to church i hadn't stopped praying i hadn't stopped having a personal relationship with god and it's very tempting when you get in those situations to think god's abandoned me and and i've obviously done something wrong and i'm being punished but once you get through the experience and look back then you realize the purpose of why that happened and looking back a year or so after it had happened, I regained my health. And even though at the time my grades started slipping, overall they weren't really impacted that much. Eventually I got released from the lease that I had. I got a newer car that was better. And of course, another relationship came along afterwards. And so it was just emphasizing the fact that we really need to be faithful especially when we are young adults and and we don't have the life experience that yeah. we need yeah. to just know that everything will work out okay mm -hmm. um because i think a lot of fear and uncertainty comes from those situations when you're young because you simply don't know that it will be okay but it will and hmm. you need to ha to lean on the faith that you do have during those times that's awesome shana Lionel, we have a couple minutes left. I want to hear uh, just uh, briefly, I love the article, You Rule, where you develop the term about being a co-ruler and, and really connecting with that truth. You know, it's one of those things where uh, growing up in the church felt so often that there's this meekness, this weakness, this almost apologetic, uh, I'm sorry, I'm a Christian type idea, just hoping to make it into the gates or right. be there when Jesus comes. Right. But as I was really sifting through the Psalms, it really struck me uh, several times the, the kingly heritage that is ours. And it says throughout the Psalms that we are co-rulers with God over the universe. That's I amazing. mean, by virtue of him adopting us as his children, we rule with him. Not that we're megalomaniacs, you know, and want to have the Dr. Evil, you know, type ruling type things. But you, that th you quoted uh, Psalm chapter eight in that article, I believe. Psalm we were made a little lower than God, that Hebrew term Elohim. Yes, which me Elohim is God's 
you know and in fact some translations will say gods your god so the trinity the, the mm-hmm. reference to the trinity mm-hmm. you know and a little, 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 a little lower than angels. I mean, just think about that, what that means. And so oftentimes, you know, we think, uh, we hear songs and, and we hear people talking and preaching and teaching that you're, you're worms in the dust. You know, you're nothing. Uh, it, but that's not true. We are God's children who, whom he has appointed to be co-rulers with him over the universe. That's not a worm, my friend. <laughs> you know, that's not a dust ball under somebody's bed that's been forgotten about in some obscure corner of the universe. We are somebody. And it seems that Christians of all people, although they shouldn't be arrogant and boisterous, should have the best self-confidence of anybody on the planet because God is our Father and we're one with Him and He's made us co-rulers with Him. I mean, that was a revelation to me that year after being beat around and kicked around by some well-intentioned Christians, maybe. You know? Wow. That's a powerful message. Uh, Shana, in the minute we have left, um, give, a, give a short, give, give a short um, message to our audience in terms of what you hope that they will gather from your writings in this book, God Encounters book. Well, I think it's important to know that God Encounters is unlike any other young adult devotional that you'll find out there. All of us that contributed have very different writing styles and um, really for any type of personal devotion that you like to do, there are narrative pieces, there are first-hand accounts, there are stories, and the unique thing about the God Encounters book is that there's a workbook in there. There are actual pages where you can write about your experience and how it reflects on, on what you're reading and the scriptural references that go along with the passages in the book. And that's what really makes it an active experience. It's not a devotion that you just read to get through your day. It's an experience that we want to enhance in your life. We want your experience to be better. Thank you, Shana, for joining me in Lino. God bless you all. We'll see you next time. Hope on Fire is produced by Livestreams Media, a listener-supported ministry. To download a free copy of today's program or be a part of our social network, please visit our website at hopeonfire.org. You may also contact us by writing to Lifestreams Media, P.O. Box 608-513, Orlando, Florida 32860, or online at hopeonfire.org. Thank you so much for your letters and continued support. Until next time, may God set your hope on fire.